Hey there PhD friends. So once in a while I will see the message um, from people asking me to talk about um, my experiences as an international student and because this channel is mostly focused on helping PhDs navigate the non-academic career market, I've sort of stayed away from necessarily making this channel about international students although i have a few videos on the channel where i do share about like different visas that you can have as an international student and my eb2 process and so on and so forth but um you know i thought about it and one of the things i came to a realization of is that you know we're whole human beings right and there are different facets of us and sometimes it's good to share your story or the challenges or the things that you've been through because it's most likely going to encourage somebody else so that's the spirit in which i'm making this video everything i say is based on my experiences not anybody else's just mine as an international student in the united states and hopefully from what i share you are encouraged or informed right on what it's actually like to be an international student in the united states so if that sounds good to you go ahead grab yourself a drink a snack something and let's chat so i first came to the u.s as an international student back in 2003 and it is yes it is very crazy to me that this year is going to be 19 years since i came to the u.s and usually at this point people ask so how old are you then this year uh, in April, God willing, I'm going to be turning, turning 39. So yes, you, you, if you added up my age, yes, you're accurate. I'm going to be turning 39. So I came here in 2003 to attend college. Before that, I had attended one year of university in Ghana. Um, I went to the University of Ghana, went to one year there, and then transferred to Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania in Pennsylvania. Um, and I loved the, my school so much much because it was um i i grew up in a rural area a rural part of ghana and edinburgh was in a quiet rural area so i was really really grateful for that because i'm not a big even up till today i'm not a big city person so it was nice that this was a school that was it was a state school the tuition was very low at the time they used to give international students a waiver there was a, like a tuition waiver that we had um it didn't waive all the tuition but it did waive part of it um and so it made the tuition really low and affordable and i was able to attend college there now one of the things that ends up happening when you're an international student and i see this quite a bit on instagram on linkedin everywhere people can post pictures is usually when people first come to the u.s or when people land you know anywhere abroad from wherever they they're, they're coming from and especially when you're coming from the developing world people will take beautiful pictures and you know portray the goodness of the land and yes there is a lot of good in the u.s um, i'm not going to say there isn't there it's amazing the united states is an amazing country i also happen to spend a little bit of time in the uk so yeah the uk is also a great place um and so yes these developed places are really nice and definitely things move easily right uh when you come from the developing world where sometimes governments um, slow down the progress of people or don't create enough jobs or don't create environments that allow people to thrive you do feel different when you come to a place where things are different so yes all of that is true and then you of course we get to watch movies and tv shows that portray you know america in 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 a particular light and so we see the positive and we see the good and everybody wants to be here and you should you should come it's a nice place to be right but i think that what gets lost in translation sometimes are the real very very real difficulties that a lot of international students go through i remember one of my friends when we were in college she was so distressed at a point she had to actually quit school and and 
try to find a job and it was much much later maybe a decade later that I think she picked up school again you know so things like that happen where people are not able to keep on because when you're coming into the US at least this was when I was coming in in 2003 you had to prove that you had the money to pay for the tuition that the school was asking for so most people you know will have that in the beginning but then come here and maybe they had somebody that was going to help them and then that helpful you know doesn't come through or something you know there are various reasons why this may happen and then they're stranded and they don't have money and you know people are hungry and and these are real things these are real I wish that this this was stuff that somebody told me but this is stuff that I myself experienced and there were people that were my friends that experienced it right so again I knew people that had to drop out of school because they couldn't keep up with the tuition, right? And so that's one thing to think about. And um, if you, especially when you're coming as an undergrad, most undergraduate schools do not offer international students scholarships unless you go to more endowed schools like Harvard or Yale. If you're able to get into some of those um, Ivy League institutions, a lot of the time those schools tend to have bigger financial endowments and therefore can afford to give some international students some you know sort of tuition waiver or something like that and like i say my state school even though it wasn't like all of the tuition part of it was waived and so it made the fees lower unless you're able to do that or get some kind of scholarship it can be very very difficult to pay the tuition and it's important to know that most students in the US have to borrow money in order to attend school. They have to borrow money, they have to take out student loans. Um, there may be a few people that whose parents set up funds for them much earlier on in life and therefore they have those funds but most of the people that I knew they took out student loans to go to school and they as a lot of those people are still even 10 20 years out of school are still paying those loans back. So it's a huge financial investment if you want to come to school in the U.S. So that's something to really, really think about because I hate for anybody to come to the U.S. with all these big dreams and, you know, super excited to get started and then have those dreams cut off because you can't pay tuition because things are difficult for you. So just keep that in mind. Also, another thing I wanted to chip in was the fact that a lot of the time, the undergrad degrees are super expensive and I think that most people, I, you know, left to me, the advice I would give to people is to finish your undergrad in your home country and then usually there are more opportunities for scholarships, for assistantships, for fellowships, for masters and PhD level. So then if you wanted to then come to the U.S., um, to pursue a master's or pursue a PhD, then that is a much more efficient use of your time and money because you'll have a little bit more because fewer people end up going into master's and PhDs, pro PhD programs, right? So there is a little bit more money for that. Okay. And, and so usually you could come into the U.S. with a scholarship or with a fellowship or something like that to attend school. Also, when it comes to, to the money thing, it's not just money to pay um, tuition. It's also money to live, right? Money to pay rent, money to buy food. It's money to do everything, right? And then there's health insurance that you need to get. That's not cheap. Um, and I remember my school at a point, they required every international student to have health insurance and provide proof of health insurance. <laughs> that was a whole other thing. Provide proof of health insurance. And for most of us, that didn't have parents here. Like, where were we going to get this health insurance? Health insurance is super expensive. Private health insurance. So we'd have to, like, find... I remember back then there was this one program that served international students. I don't know if that program still exists. I've forgotten the name, so I can't even provide that. But they had this... Um, um, program where you could buy health insurance from them and they would give you the limits that they because you had to have these limits um, that the schools were looking for and it was also important because I remember back then there was an international student on my campus who had passed away and the university had to um, get the money to get get his body back home unfortunately and 
And that was a big financial investment. And I think that's where that came from, that we needed to have all this health insurance and all this other insurance so that if anything happened, they would pull the money from the insurance. <laughs> so so these were some of the things that, you know, I went through, we went through, and it was, it was hard. It wasn't easy. And then another experience I had was... Um, you know, coming to the US, getting promises from people, and then people not following through with their promises um, because of, of one reason or the other. And I'm sure everybody has a story to tell in this regard. People that come and their family members welcome them, maybe their family members promise to help, and they show up and that does not happen. It's a reality. Yeah, these are not myths. These are real things that happen to people. And it's another thing to take into consideration that as you are coming to the US, you should not uh, have it in your mind that you're going to depend on anybody. This is really, really important. Yes, that uncle or auntie may have promised you they love you, they bring you gifts back home. When it comes to the US, things definitely change and are different. And um, sometimes it's not that they want to break those promises. Sometimes it's just life. And life is hard for them as well. And they are, pff, life is hard for them as well. <laughs> That's all I can even say to that. Now, most of you watching this, you're adults and you don't need me to give you advice on who should be your friends, but it's important who you choose to be your friends when you come to the US. It's absolutely important. Um, and the reason it's important is because those friends can either give you good advice or bad advice. And I definitely watch people get really bad advice and take bad decisions and things not go well for them at a point in their stay here. So it's really important that you are selective when it comes to the advice you listen to. Um, any advice that involves you defrauding the government, defrauding anybody, please do not listen to that advice, okay? Do not. You may think you're fooling somebody, but eventually things do catch up with you. Um, and I raise my voice at that point because it is the truth. Things eventually catch up with you. So you have to be careful whose advice you're listening to and whose advice you're implementing. Otherwise, it may seem like things are going well. And then before you know it, I, I heard this once in, in, a, in, a, in a TV show and I, and I think it's so, it's so accurate of the US that never underestimate the gamesmanship of the US government. The fact that you defrauded or were fraudulent on something and nobody said anything doesn't mean it's not going to come bite you in about 20 years. Remember that. I also think it's really important that you have a plan of what you're going to do once school is over. Now, I wanted to say this earlier, but let me chip this in here, that um, it's really, really important for you to have a plan, <laughs> really important for you to have a plan when you first come here because as an international student, your visa is limited, right? And at some point, you're either going to make the decision to leave the country um, or continue education. Most of the time, these are the two things that you, two choices that you have, or maybe you work for a little bit, but work, um, the opportunity to work is usually quite limited, right? So you have to make up your mind on what it is that you want to do, okay? So um, I knew coming into the US that I wanted to either go to medical school or get a PhD. I knew that off the bat. So every decision I took right from undergrad was like geared towards that goal. Every step, every decision were bricks I was laying so that I would meet that goal. Eventually, I did go get my PhD in microbiology and immunology and finish that in 2015. So it's important to have a goal in mind. Are you trying to get a doctorate? Are you trying to get to the master's level? Are you planning on um, leaving? Usually, most international students 
are required to leave? Are you planning on maybe working from an international organization? Your UX experience definitely gives you more opportunity for that. And so it really is important that you have some sort of goal in mind and that you take steps and decisions that help you get to that goal. If you don't have a goal, it becomes difficult. You begin to wonder. You be, that's when you begin to listen to the wrong advice. That's when you begin to take decisions that you're not supposed to take. And I think it's really, really important. And so having this goal and sometimes maybe I would say that, you know, like people always say have a plan A and have a plan A only and never have anything else because that's your goal. And I agree with that to some extent, but sometimes things happen and maybe plan A doesn't work, right? Then maybe plan B works, right? So it's important to have like maybe one or two like destinations as to where you want to go. And then everything you do will be geared towards those goals. Now, I, like I was saying earlier, my goal was either to go to medical school or to get a PhD. And so my my, my major was biology, right? And then, and then there were people that were telling me, you need to change your major to this, you need to change your major to that. But then I knew what my goal was. I knew that my goal was med school or a PhD. So if I changed it to something else, that just would not work, right? And so I stuck with what I knew, what my goal was, I stuck with it, followed through, got my PhD, I'm here today, you know? So it is important for you to have a goal. So that's a little bit of my experience of being in the US. It's it's a great, it's a fantastic place to be. Um, but in my opinion, it's not the end all be all. I've also seen people that have stayed um, in Ghana or going to work for international organizations or going to do something else or move to another country that have thrived. And so um, whilst it's a wonderful place to be and yes, you know, come study, it's a wonderful place to study. I also always tell people to keep their options open because your greatest place of blessing could actually be outside of the US. I know it's not a popular thing to say, but there it is. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video.